Hey guys, it's me, Holly Madison. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm giving you guys another tour of my archive. I did one earlier on this channel and you guys really liked it and there was some other stuff you wanted to see that I didn't take out of the boxes like my Dancing with the Stars outfits and things like that. So that's where we're at today. And if you'd hit the like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Also, today's video is sponsored by Lily Silk. They make all these amazing silk products and more. I'm wearing a top from them right now. I love it. It's navy blue, really soft and pretty. And it's, I think it's part of a pajama set that I ordered, but this can also look really good just as like part of casual wear or like put a blazer over it and it's great for business. I also have their pillowcases, which I love. I love a silk pillowcase. It's so good for your hair and your skin. So I love that. I love it. I love my pillowcases. I got this pretty grayish silver color to go with the rest of my bed set. I absolutely love my new Lily Silk pillowcases. You can see they're so gorgeous and I love a silk pillowcase. There's something so, not only does it feel amazing, but there's something so like old Hollywood about like a silk pillowcase and a silk sheet. You know what I mean? And also there's so many benefits to using a silk pillowcase that I love. For one, it prevents wrinkling. Like, have you ever had like a stiff cotton pillowcase and you wake up and you have like those lines all over your face? It's not cute. So never happens with a silk pillowcase from Lily Silk. Also, it helps prevent breakage and frizz on your hair, which with my super bleached out hair, I need all the help I can get. So I love that. Silk is also a natural allergy repellent. It repels mold and dust and I have allergies. So again, this is perfect for me. Silk helps your skin retain moisture and it's also a natural temperature regulator. So that helps you stay just that perfect temperature when you're asleep. Let me show you some other amazing basics I got from them as well. So this is one of my favorite pieces from Lily Silk. It's a super soft, classic sweater, perfect for winter. I'm gonna take my kids to this snow place in Vegas that makes real snow. And I'm gonna wear this, it's so cute. I like to style this with like tights and a little skirt. So this is kind of like a cute look to go out to dinner or go out with your friends. But also if you wanna go way more casual, it looks cute casual too. So it totally looks cute with like jeans and sneakers too. So if you wanna wear this out running errands or to go get your lashes or nails done, it's perfect. I love how it's like just long enough to cover the front of your jeans and it's just the perfect fit. And you can even like pull it down and make it a little cozier. So I love this sweater. It's one of my favorite things I got from Lily Silk. Another one of my favorite pieces from Lily Silk is this super soft silk black dress. You can see it's really, really classic. You could just wear it out with some heels or you can give it a more business casual look. Let me show you. So you could totally do a business style too with just like a blazer. It's a totally conservative yet sexy cut that kind of works anywhere. That's why I love this dress. It's like the perfect basic. And you guys, here is that pajama set I was talking about. I'm wearing heels with it right now because like I've told you before, you could totally wear this to a brunch. And it has pockets, which I love. This is the softest silk. It's so just chic and timeless. It's so comfortable and cozy. The perfect thing to wear to bed with your silk pillowcases. But also you could totally wear this out. You could wear this out if you wanted to look extra cute running errands. Wear it over to your boyfriend's house or, you know, to a brunch or something. I think it's so cute. These pants also, they're elastic. Let me show you. They fit really well. And these also have pockets. So you've got four pockets total on this outfit, which I love. I love a pocket. And these pants also coordinate with the camisole top I was wearing at the start of this video. Also, don't forget to visit the Lily Silk websites. I will put the link in the description. They are having a Black Friday sale, so you can find all kinds of amazing women's clothing basics, as well as the amazing pillowcases, eye masks, scrunchies, all kinds of things in silk. 
So we are back in the archive. I set up a rack of all my Barachi dresses. I was watching, there was this girl on TikTok, she was making really cute videos about the girls who lived at the mansion and stuff, and they were talking about Barachi. Barachi is, it's still there. It's a boutique in Beverly Hills, and I always thought they had the most gorgeous dresses. They would showcase those dresses and they had all these really like beautiful metallic laces and Swarovski crystals. And their store is set up like a showroom and just the lighting on the dresses would make them sparkle. And the very first mansion party I went to, Hef was dating these twins and they looked so gorgeous and they were wearing Barachi dresses. And I just thought they looked like the epitome of like glamor and what somebody in the playboy world should look like in my brain. So when I moved into the mansion, I really wanted to shop there. And when we were given money to buy a dress for the Golden Globes, I was so excited. And I told the girl in the room next to me that I really wanted to go to the place that the twins used to shop at. And she said, oh, we can't shop there anymore because Hef's in a lawsuit with them. So I was so disappointed because that was one of the things that I thought looked so cool about being a girlfriend, I guess, is they looked so pretty. But eventually I did get to shop there and he didn't wanna spend as much money as he used to spend on the women who would shop there. That's kind of in a roundabout way how the lawsuit came about. And But I got permission to shop there and they were great at Barachi. They always worked with me and what my budget was. So I'll show you the dresses I got there. I'm afraid that they won't be done justice on this video just because you can't see really how sparkly everything is, or like really the detail of the fabrics. Even if I get super up close, you can see it a little bit. This is the first dress I bought from them. I just thought it was really pretty and classic, and I like the floral under the cream colored lace. It's just kind of like a mid-length dress with an asymmetrical hem. I love it, I wore this so many times. I haven't tried any of these on lately. I'm just kind of sad and terrified that they wouldn't fit because these are all from before I had kids. And when you have kids, your rib cage expands and doesn't go back down. And all these Barachi dresses were super custom fitted, corseted, and they have these little delicate zippers in the back. And I'm just afraid it wouldn't get past like the midpoint on my rib cage. Maybe, maybe I'll try one of these days. So this is a basic black dress. It has a very shimmery lace. I don't, I don't think you can really see how shimmery it is on the camera, but. It has like a corseted back and I can't find the string that goes through it. But this was a really simple but well-fitting, just basic gown that I love. Well, I don't know if you'd call it short, more of a cocktail dress, but I wore this so many times. It was such a great basic for me. I bought this dress for the Golden Globes parties one year. I love it because it reminds me of Elsa. It's just that silvery blue and it's got crystals on it really pretty. I wore this so many times. This is probably my favorite of all the Barachi dresses because it's very Jessica Rabbit. It's very, I'm sad that you can't really see like the shape of the dress because it's not on, but it was very hourglass and just reminds me of Jessica Rabbit. Beyonce has this dress in one of her videos. I think it was the Naughty Girl video. That shows you how long ago this was. But this is probably my favorite dress. I wore it in the opening credits of Girls Next Door. It's when you see my bobblehead. She's in her bedroom and wearing this dress. This is another one of my favorites and it's the only long gown I ever bought from them. It's short in the front, but it has a really long train. I'm not showing you the pretty side. A really long train in the back. And I wore this um, to a party in New York for Playboy's 50th anniversary a long time ago. And I just remember seeing this dress in the showroom and it was cinched really tight on a mannequin. So it looked like it had zero waist and it just had this long train. And I thought, oh, that is an epic gown. I really want it. And this is a pink one, short pink one. I'm also wearing this in the opening credits of Girls Next Door. I wore it to another Golden Globes party on a different year than the blue dress. And this was in 2004 and I just loved the way I looked that night. And that was the picture they used for the bobblehead at the very end of the opening where we're all standing next to half. This one is another short cocktail dress. And I love this one with the jewel detail on the off shoulder sleeve. It reminded me, you might know, cause I've told the story a million times. Growing up, my favorite toy I ever had was a set of Marilyn Monroe paper dolls that I got for Christmas when I was like 10. 
And one of the dresses Marilyn wears in one of her early films has this kind of like jewel detail on the sleeve. So it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. And I wore this when we went to um, an event on the Queen Mary. We stayed the night. It was a really eventful night. A lot of weird stuff happened, but it was Marilyn Monroe themed because they were having a press night on the ship and like a discussion about Marilyn. And they had all these Marilyn artifacts on display and it was later debunked that some of them weren't real. And it wasn't a surprise to me because I remember walking through that display and they had this rhinestone jewelry on display that they said was the jewelry she wore in the Diamonds Are Girls Best Friend scene in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, but it didn't even look like the jewelry. Like it wasn't the same. I was like, what? This one I didn't purchase from the store. I actually purchased it from a playmate who wanted to sell it. She had this made um, for like her, she was like one of the Millennium Playmates and she had this made for um, her press luncheon and she wanted to sell it so I bought it and I just really love it. It's just a really pretty brown and just kind of like understated. This one I'm sad because it ripped. Like the fabric is supposed to be up and like asymmetrical, but this is another pretty fiery one. No rhinestones on this, but it has like a sparkly velvet detail fabric. And then after I had enough gowns from them, I had them make lingerie outfits for the Midsummer Night's Dream Party. This was like a two piece I wore. It's like a sheer turquoise blue with like a little sheer bra top. And yes, they even made the thong that goes with it because of course. And then this thing I think was the last thing I ordered from them because then I started borrowing stuff. Like in season one at the Midsummer Night's Dream Party where we give Anastasia the makeover, I'm wearing a purple outfit from them and they let me borrow that one. And then after that, I kind of stopped shopping there, I think because I just went on a Roberto Cavalli phase and all I would buy is Roberto Cavalli stuff for a while because I tend to get in these like fixations where I'm like fixated and really enthusiastic about one thing. Not that I didn't still love Baracci, but for the next couple years, it was all Roberto Cavalli from there. But this is the last thing I bought from them for a Midsummer Night's Dream Party. It's pink and green, which is probably my favorite color combination of all time. Has really pretty details. Has a corseted back. You can see all the pretty little fabric flowers and rhinestones and stuff. So that's my Barachi rack. I, I really love looking at all the dresses lined up. It makes me feel like I have my own little personal shop. And I've said this before in my last archive video, some of you might be asking, oh, if that was a bad time in your life, why do you save all the stuff? And as I've said before, because the clothes gave me so much joy when I was there. I mean, granted, I was kind of within a box of what was acceptable, but I felt like collaborating with a designer with an outfit or designing my own outfit or having my own outfit custom made, it was a really fun creative process for me and a way for me to express myself. And the clothes just made me so happy. So of course I wanna hang on to those. Also, Barachi inspired me when I was doing like different costumes and things like this is my Tinkerbell costume from Halloween one year and I always wanted to do the thing where they would always take like a really special like metallic lace or a beaded lace and then put rhinestones on top of it. So I would go and like source a fabric and the rhinestones and everything so I could have my little Tinkerbell outfit. I did it with my peacock outfit too but the peacock outfit has moved to my LA house. So I forgot what I showed you guys last time but did I show you? when me and my friend Ashley invented Disney bounding back in 2001. We didn't coin the term, but I swear nobody that I know of was Disney bounding before then, but I'm sure a ton of people will crop up in the comments saying, no, they invented it in 1999 or something. But as far as I know, nobody was doing this. You know, they wouldn't let you wear a costume to Disneyland. So Ashley was like, wouldn't it be so cool if we had outfits that weren't really costumes, but they were kind of like a character. So she had this terry cloth dress made for me at Trashy Lingerie that says Daisy, like Daisy Duck. Because terry cloth was really in back then. That was when Juicy Couture was doing like the terry cloth track suits and things like that. And I think she, I want to say she had an Alice in Wonderland terry cloth outfit. Did I show you my Heatherette dress from the House Bunny premiere? I don't know if I did. I'm gonna have to look at that video before I edit this one because I forgot what I showed you. I know what I didn't show you that you guys wanted to see was my Dancing with the Stars outfits. I love doing Dancing with the Stars. It was so much fun. I was only on for four weeks, sadly, so I only have four costumes. But when the season's over, they give you the option of buying your costumes if you want to. Most people don't, but I love, as you can tell, I love hanging on to clothes as like, I 
cord my clothes. I also still have like the robe they give you. I never really wore this robe. I just kept it as a souvenir. This was my first outfit. I love this color orange. I think it's so fun, especially since orange, I feel like is a color that you don't think to wear that often. And I wanted to show you how they sew these giant Victoria's Secret push-up bras in and like a little space for your microphone because they were so worried, you know, the show was live back when I did it. So they didn't want to have like a nip slip or wardrobe malfunction. So they would give you pasties and then they would tape the pasties on and then they would put the giant and then they would put like a sticky bra on and then they would have like the big bra built in so there was like no chance of anything falling out. This is my quick step gown. It's like the one gown I had on the show. And I'm sad because the fabric tore a little bit. It has this sash off of one arm, but yes, love that. Felt very princessy in that one. And this one is like everybody else's favorite. When people talk to me about my Dancing with the Stars outfit, this is the one that everybody remembers. It was for a samba and it was like a cute little two piece. And I remember after my season was over, I was thinking about going back and buying the outfits, but I wasn't really like in a hurry. But then I saw somebody on the next season was wearing this for her promo pictures. And I was like, nah, gotta go buy my outfits before somebody else takes them. <laughs> so every week you and your dance partner would go up into another floor in the CBS building and see Randall who would design all the costumes. And I felt like that was a really fun process. It felt very like old Hollywood studio system type stuff. And he would whip these costumes up so fast. Like you would go in there and a few days later you would have your costume. This was for an Argentine tango and it was the one with the most rhinestones I think they made that season had like a fringy bottom. My partner, Dimitri, designed this one. I actually didn't have a hand in designing any of these because I was called in at the last minute to replace Jewel. So the first two outfits I think had already been done. And I don't know who came up with the Samba one, but that looks very like Playboy Holly. So I don't, I don't know who came up with that, but I like it. And then um, my dance partner came up with this and I love it. And I love how many Swarovski crystals they put around the neck. I think that's so pretty. I think I explained last time how I didn't keep any of my peep show costumes, the show I did in Vegas, um, except this one, because this one I added. It's like a crystal covered robe that I had on for like two seconds in the show. But this was something I added after we changed one of the dance numbers. So I was able to keep that, but I didn't own any other costumes, so I didn't keep them. I wish I did, because you know I love hoarding me some costumes. I wanted to show you guys, this is random. It was one of the last things Trashy Lingerie made for me, but I wanted to be Katy Perry for Halloween, and I wanted her California Girls candy outfit, and I think they did such a good job. So cute, all the little candies and the details. I love this one. It's just so fun to look at. It makes me happy. It's like sexy clown candy girl. Oh my God, and then I found this race car driver outfit. I don't even remember what it was for, except I was doing some event at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway back when I was doing a show here in Vegas. And it has like my show's logo on it and my little logo on it, an H and a heart. That's what I used to put on my merch back in the day. <laughs> and my name on it. And I was so excited to get this because you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of Britney Spears back in the day when she had this really cute race car driver outfit for some like Pepsi thing she did at a racetrack and it was so cute. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. This is more like a normal race car driver outfit. It's not like as sleek and fitted as hers was, but you know, I was having my little Britney Spears moment. To show you my Marilyn Monroe bra, this is a black strapless bra I bought at a Julian's auction that belonged to Marilyn, so I love it. It's very treasured. You can see like the elastic is a little bit weak on it because it was well worn. But I love this, it's my little treasure. You know what I couldn't find that somebody was asking me about? I couldn't find this sheer dress I made with like a rhinestone Playboy bunny on it. Somebody was asking me about that. And I almost want to say I got rid of it, which I wish I wouldn't have gotten rid of anything. But that dress I made by myself and it was inspired by this Bob Mackie gown because I'm obsessed with Bob Mackie. And he made this Playboy gown back in the 70s that was like nude looking, it had a Playboy bunny on it. But eventually I got that gown. So I think I got rid of the one I made thinking, oh, that's the janky version. But I wish I wouldn't have got rid of it, especially when I think of all the time I spent putting all the crystals on it. Urgh. 
but I'm not going to show you the Bob Mackie dress. If I had it on a mannequin, I would, but the way it's stored, it's stored so carefully and it has all these beads on it and like dangling beads and things like that. So to even get it out of how it's packed and stored is like risky business. So I don't, if I was like in my final destination closet and was going to like put it on a mannequin, I'd show it to you guys. But so maybe one day, maybe one day I'll have that Reese Witherspoon home edit closet of my dreams. But until then, she's going to remain packed, packed up as she is. So thanks for joining me, you guys. It's always fun to do like these little walks down memory lane in my closet. And let me know what kind of video you'd like to see next. I'll talk to you later. Bye.